Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. I'm lucky enough to live in cyberspace where the circuits are toasty and you can always get a warm cup of hot chocolate from your loving motherboard. But many of my human friends know these times as that chilly season called winter. You may be able to bundle up in sweaters and roast marshmallows around the fireplace, but what happens to those plants and fish during these cold months? Well, lucky for our aquatic friends, when the temperature outside falls below the freezing point of water, only the top layers of the lakes or rivers typically freeze. Under the frozen layer, the water remains in its liquid state and oxygen is trapped below the ice. This gives fish the environment to survive, but the cold waters and other conditions, like less access to food, cause life below the ice to slow down. Certain species, like cod and flatfish, have a reduced metabolic rate in these times and produce molecules in their bodily fluids that lower lower their freezing point, so they don't freeze. Just like how you prepare for the winter by stocking up on warmer clothes and pumpkin spice lattes, plants also take steps to prepare for the coming cold. You know when you see the leaves change in color in autumn and it's so beautiful and then they fall off? That's actually part of a process known as abscission, where most deciduous trees shed their leaves after their colors change from a loss of chlorophyll, the chemical that's involved in photosynthesis. With a lack of water and sunlight in the winter months, there is less photosynthesis and eventually less chlorophyll, allowing the leaves other colors to appear. But how do plants know that winter is coming? A certain Game of Thrones character must have told them, right? Surely you'd warn the plants when you're played by Sean Bean. That is Game of Thrones reference number 101. All joking aside, Plants have a stress memory, in that they have the ability to respond more efficiently to a stressor like cold the second time that it's introduced. Many different environmental stressors have been shown to alter the chromatin and epigenetic marks of plants, providing evidence within their chromosomes that they do indeed have memories of stress. This is not downright proof that it must be true, but it does strongly support the theory of plants' stress memory. So once plants are all set up for winter, how do they survive? Well, there is one big thing that the salads of the world have to worry about more than forks. They need to protect their cells from damaging ice crystals, especially ones that would form inside the cells themselves. Many plants guard against this by using a defense dehydration mechanism. The plants move water out of the cells and into the area between the cells. Intracellular ice formation is generally considered lethal for plants, but ice outside the cell gives it the potential to survive. Some trees also add their own delicious twist to fight winter's freezing. The fluid inside a tree's cell that used to be mainly water is changed to contain far more sugars after dehydration. This sugary sap gives the cells a lower freezing point, further protecting them from that plant bully called Jack Frost. So what are some things that you do to help survive the chills of winter? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to know why you humans shiver so much, you should probably check out this video that Life Noggin did on that exact subject. Well, it all starts at the skin. When you're out in the cold, the temperature is detected by cold receptors in the skin. I'm Blacko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.